Hello everyone and welcome back to Celestial Invitational. I'm D2 with me is Monk and we are getting down to the wire in this second day. We have obviously Eloise, Surrender, Fo Oliver, and Jay Shaw in this group and we're down to our last two matches that being Eloise versus Jay Shaw and Fo Oliver versus Surrender. Jay Shaw currently at a 2-0 score, Fo Oliver at an 0-2 score and Eloise and Surrender at one game apiece. Yeah, that's right. So our next match of the day will be uh, Eloise versus Jay Shaw. Eloise, obviously the more well-known player, but it's actually Jay Shaw that's been dominating in this group. Um, with some kind of uh, sometimes he has like unconventional decisions, but in in the end, I guess it all works out. Yeah, Jay Shaw. When I casted him, he was a pretty solid player. Uh, obviously, um, someone who made the qualifying around twice and uh, qualified the second time around. So, a uh, pretty good player overall. And uh, as we look at, take a look at Eloise's deck, it's going to be a Secret Paladin and uh, Aggressive. Sh looks like a Mech Shaman. Uh, kind of. A, looks like it's pretty similar to uh, Fallover's, actually. And uh, finally, her Hunter, which is um, mostly face, but a bit of mid range in there with the uh, Paladin Shredders. So. Uh, kind of like a hybrid E, but going, you know, leaning toward the, the face variant. As we see Jay Shaw on the screen there, our man of the group, 2 and 0 oh, thus far. Part of Team Celestial, they have uh, a lot of great players on that team. But yeah, going back to what I was saying earlier, just a pretty solid. Um, doesn't have any you know, crazy next level plays that you sometimes see out of Surrender. But overall, very solid player and uh, not too surprised that he's doing well. So for his Warrior, it looks like it is going to be Control Warrior. And uh, with the... Uh, I'm not sure what that fire drop is. Is that, is that Sarad maybe? Anyway, so the Mage is going to be a Freeze Mage with uh, no Reno. And finally, the Priest, which is looking like it's going to be a Control Priest. Wow, it's really interesting. A control priest that tops out basically uh, just a guard true heart. Yeah, so maybe just completely anti aggro lineup, which makes sense given all the aggressive decks that we've been seeing so far. Uh, that's right. Um, I have to say, like, overall, I'm a bit disappointed at the lack of variety in this group, um, as, especially compared to Firebat yesterday, who brought kind of like three or four decks that we haven't seen before out of his nine decks. The uh, Freeze Priest. The Freeze Mage without Alex Straza, Mill Rogue, and even a, a kind of really super taunty Druid. It's not the most creative deck, but it's still kind of different. Um, also, in the last group, we had kind of like a Dragon Shaman almost, or at least a Control Shaman. Meanwhile, this group, mostly everyone's been playing standard stuff. Um, it, what do you think just generally? I know you casted a lot of matches in this format. Is this just about the general amount of variety that there is, or is like Firebat just an outlier? Yeah, I would say more so the latter, that Firebat's a bit of an outlier. Typically, you see a lot of the same decks. Obviously, you know, they're all different players, and you kind of see... Um, uh, I mean, they can, they're can they bound to bring different things. Um, I'm kind of confused about the stream. We saw the Rocket Shark kind of go across the screen. Uh, obviously, we had lag issues yesterday, not thus far up till now. So, is that their stream or mine? Unless um, Jay Shaw's not really, really sure. Unless Jay Shaw's really still... But we did see the rocket. There's that rocket truck again. So, um, huh, that's a bit interesting. I'm gonna yeah, go ahead it... and re refresh the stream uh, just in case, just for you guys. Uh, we are piggybacking on the uh, tiny stream again. Thanks for it seems uh, celestial for allowing us to do that. Looks like it was frozen, which is uh, kind of bizarre. So good thing that we ended up refreshing before we missed part of the game. But uh, yeah, that that actually worked out really well for us. We uh, got into. Right up to the first match, it's going to be Freeze Mage versus Mech Shaman. And I think typically this matchup favors the Mech Shaman just because of this one card in their deck, or at least, I guess, two cards, the Doom Hammers, which really the, the Freeze Mage can't really deal with at all. Hmm, looks like we might be having a continued issues. I wonder why it loads and then freezes. We, I mean, the Rocket Shark obviously has been going across the top, and that's indicative of the... Um... Just the stream in general. I'm a bit confused here, guys. Sorry about this. Yeah, it might be just um, connection issues from the uh, either from RN to Doyo TV or from Doyo TV to the uh, stream. Yeah, we saw a bunch of GGs in the Chinese chat, so maybe the stream is having some issues as well. Um, as we do see, huh? 
All right, so it looks like it's having a bit of issues uh, keeping up here, but it uh, looks like it's finally starting to move along at least a little bit, although our OBS is kind of having issues. Um, right. All right, apologies for this, guys. Uh, we'll try to figure this out as we go along. Uh, again, we are piggybacking on the Chinese stream uh, with the permission of the team of Team Celestial, but um, yeah, not really sure what to uh, do here. Looks like we'll just change quality. All right, so we're going to we're going to stick with the lower quality. Um, sorry about that. And uh, it looks like we have skipped the first few turns. It's going to be the uh, aggressive shaman against uh, the freeze mage. And uh, again, apologies. Yeah, um, I think this. This actually looks to be a pretty good game for Jay Shaw. Typically, the Mech Shaman has a much faster start, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. Yeah, definitely. And the funny thing is, is usually uh, the Freeze Mage has a uh, pretty good time against aggressive decks because of the way they're able to usually shut down uh, those decks. But uh, right here, I mean, at least as far as the aggressive Shaman is concerned, it's typically uh, pretty good for a pretty good matchup for the Shaman just because they have. Uh, options like the Doom Hammer to be able to push damage without having a board. Right, and we can see Eloise basically had three turns in which she could use the Earthshock really effectively. She could have Earthshocked the the first Loot Hoarder or the second Blood Mage Thanos or the third Acolyte of Pain. But this this leads me to believe that she's just really saving it up for uh, the key Doomsayer, which can really ruin her days. Yeah, it definitely seems like that's the uh, the case with uh, Eloise's decision making there. Uh, it makes sense with her hand too, because she does have a couple of minions that she wants to have stick on the board. Um, sometimes, if you have a lot of weapon damage that you're capable of uh, committing to your opponent, then you don't really care about your board too much. You rather just deny the card draw. Uh, and we do see the Zoom Hammer come in hand, so maybe her tactics will change uh, from here on out. But uh, yeah, up until that point, it made sense to kind of preserve her. Um, preserve her board and uh, save that Urshock for that Doomsayer. Right, this is all playing, despite Eloise's kind of lackluster or weak few turns, having to just Stormforge Axe on the first few turns, um, right now she's drawing pretty well. She has a pretty big threat in this Flame Tongue Totem combined with the Azure Drake, which will probably force Jay Shaw to do some kind of action on turn 5, uh, rather than going for card draw or developing um, a huge secret. This, but that means Eloise has a turn in which she can just freely put up the Doom Hammer in order to not deal with um, kind of a threat on the board like the Emperor Thorazane. Um, and with that, she can kind of run away with the game just with the the 16 damage that the Doom Hammer will provide over the course of four turns with the additional threat of Rockbiter weapon. Yeah, exactly. Um... Just looking at the the hand of Jay Shaw, I mean, I, I know you've you've uh, made this point a couple of times uh, in different matchups, but um, typically you don't want to see secrets in your hand. But in this case, going against aggressive matchup, kind of like going the face against the face hunter, uh, having those two ice bears isn't so bad here for Jay Shaw. Right. In some matchups, you even keep an Ice Barrier in your opening hand, as strange as that sounds. Um, I know Firebat is a huge advocate of keeping Ice Barrier against Face Hunter, but maybe perhaps not against mid-range decks like Mid-Range Hunter or Hybrid Hunter. Right, yeah. It, it definitely uh, makes a huge difference to be able to have those. And uh, like you said, not the greatest to keep against decks that have annoying minions, which can basically uh, blast through those. Um in any case, we are going to see finally the Earthshock. Uh, going to just take out that Mad Scientist pretty easily. Not going to be able to draw the uh, Ice Block is Jay Shaw off of that. And it will be pretty devastating if he indeed does the draw the Ice Block and has those four secrets in hand. Um, right. In the meantime, Eloise has a ton of damage like you were mentioning earlier. Uh, with that Whirling Zap Medic, with the Doom Hammer, so much Wind Fury. And even has the spell damage from the Azure Drake. Yeah, Eloise was saving this uh, Earthshock. I, I was thinking of maybe for Doomsayer, but also uh, Mad Scientist is a good pickoff because it directly it's a huge tempo gain for the Freeze Mage. Not only that, but she also has an option um, to deal with potential Doomsayers with the Doom Hammer plus a Lava Burst in future turns. Ooh, wow. So picks up the Rock Biter. That's going to be absolutely massive. Uh, what do you think about JSAW's decision to play the Ice Block here? I think uh, a bit of a uh, a little bit of inexperience by him on 
uh, at least what I believe, because he wasn't going to die this turn with the Ice Barrier up, and I felt like he could have played the uh, Acolyte to draw more cards in the future. Uh, though maybe he might be saving it for the ping, but I feel like that might be a bit too slow. Uh, are you sure he wouldn't die? Uh, I guess he he was one mana off. Like if he, even if he didn't use if Eloise didn't use Doomhammer, she could have used Crackle, Lava Burst, and um, and the Rockbiter weapon. Mm -hmm. But that still wouldn't be enough because she was one mana off. If she had one more mana, then it's I think it was very obvious that J Shock could have been dead from just seeing Eloise's hand currently. Yeah, I mean, if he know if he knew that he she had such an explosive hand, um, although I mean to be fair, Shaman does typically have explosive hands uh, with this um, this deck archetype. But uh, I mean, I feel like even if that were the case, you kind of have to take a chance that she doesn't have that explosive hand because you're probably gonna die anyway if that's the situation. Yeah, things are looking pretty grim for Jay Shaw. Uh, even more burn coming into Eloise's hand. So can she pop the block and kill the Doomsayer this turn? That would be kind of huge. Um, I'm almost certain she can. There's just so much damage here on board. Uh, in addition to, the, to that, there's spell power on board as well. Do you think maybe you just start off with a Crackle on the Doomsayer here? Uh, so she has 21. She needs to get through 28 damage. Um, she has on board 10 uh, just from the Wind Fury. Uh, now she's adding six more to that, and she has eight from the others. Plus she has a guaranteed, um, what is that, ten from the Crackle and Lava Burst. And uh, I said all those numbers, but I didn't actually add them up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyway. It looks like she's starting to figure out, getting going to the rope. Uh, kind of difficult this turn to kind of figure everything out while putting your, or killing the Doomsayer while putting your opponent as low as possible. So, uh, let's see what she does here. Lava Burst of Face, so that's going to leave Jay Shaw at one. Really well played by uh, Eloise. Going to give her a golf clap for that one. Yeah, nice. And not only that, but she she, uh, she has a board, so it necessitates, necessitates, necessitates sorry, Jay Shaw to freeze the board. She has a weapon, and that forces yep. Jay Shaw to freeze the face. And also, she has two spells in her hand, which forces Jay Shaw to basically throw up an ice block or some kind of heal bot this turn, some kind of healing, and none of those um, is going to work out. Oh, although she can actually Mad Scientist and Fireball the Mad Scientist, but how good does that feel? Yeah, that's uh, just delaying the inevitable. Um, there's really no way to come back after that, uh, because you're not freezing the board, and uh, even if you Alex Shaza yourself the very next turn, you're just going to die. So JC is not going to show any more cards, even though they're pretty standard. Going to concede, and Eloise is going to take the first game, go up in a series one game to zero. Right, and I would have to say, uh, Mech Shaman is generally has been performing not that well in this tournament, so it's actually really key for her to get that out in the first few games. Um, after that, she has Secret Paladin, which is really strong, and Face Hunter, and Face Hunter basically, which you don't expect to do that well in today's metagame, but it is Face Hunter, and I suspect that there are certainly quite a few decks that um, she can get some wins out of. Although, looking at Jay Shaw's lineup, hmm. I have a feeling that. It's basically Control Warrior, Freeze Mage, and um, Control Priest like with Death Lords in it. Yeah, Anti-Aggro yeah, anti Priest. So um, this might be one of those series where Eloise wins with the Secret Paladin and then just cannot win with the Phase Hunter no matter what against Jay Shaw's lineup. Yeah, even the Secret Paladin going to have a hard time picking up a win. Obviously, Secret Paladin can win against anything. Um, so, likely to pick it up somewhere, but you're absolutely right. The Phase Hunter is going to have a hard time against this lineup. So, we might see, you know, even if the Secret Paladin wins, we might see a reversed, reversed kill by uh, Jay Shaw if it goes that, that direction. But uh, we will see what happens. We're not going to count anyone in or out of it quite yet. Uh, as far as this matchup goes thus far... Eloise has a pretty reasonable hand, um, can go with the Knife Juggler to contest or basically dominate this North Shire Cleric, and from there she has a reasonable card after that. It's just really night and day um, whether you have this Knife Juggler to contest the North Shire Cleric or not, because if you don't, you're basically uh, like conceding to your opponent that she, she will draw cards. Yeah, Whereas like, the, yeah go ahead. Yeah, whereas with this play, now Jay Shaw, he's pretty much given Eloise a free North Star Cleric. Basically, that North Star Cleric says heal for three. 
Yeah, pretty much. Uh, though this Drinkmeister will help quite a bit, and uh, the Knife Striker can't get a good trade on it now, so ended up it's ended up being a pretty good uh, turn for Jaysha. But um, yeah, unlike the Dragon Priest, the Control Priest really you know survives on having that card draw. This knife doesn't matter too much. Uh, looks like yeah, Eloise just. I mean, there's no reason not to shoot the knife, right? So, goes for that. And uh, Jaysha doesn't really have much to do. Probably wants to save that circle of healing for something more important than just pinging up the shield. So, um, going to be kind of a difficult turn for him right here. Uh, do you think he develops the, pal the, uh, sorry, the Pyromancer or no? Um, I think you honestly need that Pyromancer in, in case you draw a powered shield. Like, basically, Jay Shaw is looking for two things right now. He's looking for Arcanized Soul Priest in order to combo with Circle, or he's looking for some kind of spell, probably Powered Shield, in order to combo with the Walled Pyromancer. And you just can't, as a Control Priest, you can't throw away parts of your combo, uh, or parts of your combos, in order to just get a minion on the field. Um, especially when you're just getting traded into by so many different things. Yeah, so Eloy's going to develop that uh, Noble Sacrifice just to be able to be annoying in the future. Didn't want to go with the Redemption because obviously he doesn't want to get the uh, Silver Hand Recruit redempted. Um, and, or redeemed, maybe, is the word. But uh, yeah, just going with that for now. Wants to develop the 1-1. One, one, uh, going for the both Secrets would, wouldn't be the greatest either because then the uh, Defender gets um, <coughs> redeemed. But uh, for Jaysha, again, a pretty, you know, standard Control Priest turn. Just uh, do nothing and pass on turn four. That's kind of yeah. uh, the weakness of Control Priest. Yeah, basically faking Frost Giant. I like it. <laughs> With your powering himself. <laughs> Might as well, right? Another oh, circle well, of healing. Well, that's guess... actually not bad. True. She can draw four cards. Yeah, drawing four cards. I was just going to say that Jaysha is one card away from a pretty decent play. Uh, the problem with drawing the second circle of healing, though, is now that you've shown your opponent two circles of healings, uh, she's not really afraid of an Akanai circle combo. So that's two AoEs that are out of the deck. Yeah, definitely. You, you still kind of feel like you have to go for it, though. Because, yeah. after all, it is your only play. The biggest problem with this um, is, I mean, related to what you just said, is that typically when you when you do this play and just draw a bunch of cards this way, you, what you want to do is draw into the other circle... Uh, say if you have you know a, a powered shield and then a circle, you want to draw this many cards so that you can eventually draw into uh, the other circle and your your Akanai or something else. And uh, in the end, that'll be you know huge value for you. But uh, in this case, you know he's just using both circles just to cycle, so it's going to be pretty painful for him. Let's pick up the zombie child to be able to uh, contest the board though. So you know with all this card draw, it looks like he's in a pretty solid position though. Eloise does have that uh, divine favor to potentially fill up her hand as well. Yeah, Eloise's hand is actually not that great, and all of a sudden it looks like, even though Jay Shaw didn't do like he he threw away the two circles. I think the end result honestly was pretty damn good here. Um, not only do you have going to turn six, you basically have your two turn six power plays. You have light bomb in order to deal with a huge board, in order to deal with a mysterious challenger that will come up later on. And you have the Cabal Shadow Priest that will deal with a lot of, uh, of small minions that Eloise could summon as well. Yeah, definitely. So Eloise is pretty sad now that she has the, uh, the Noble Sacrifice in play because now she won't be able to get her uh, Paladin Shadow redempted or redeemed unless there's a Shadow or Death here. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate for her. Jaysha all of a sudden has a lot of options. Do you think he just plays a Justicar here? Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think... Okay, that's also viable. The, the thing with Justicar is it doesn't put as much pressure on the board. And at this point, you really... The only thing you're concerned about is Mysterious Challenger. If you want to set up for the Mysterious Challenger. And I like not attacking here as well. Because if a Mysterious Challenger comes on the board, basically worst case scenario, then it'll only pull at most three secrets from the deck. Yeah, definitely smart of him to hold back and uh, not attack there. And uh, instead, Eloise is just going to have to play the secrets uh, manually and uh, get the Divine Favor. It does allow her to um, get four cards out of the Divine Favor, which is pretty good. Same amount of cards that Jayshop picked up with his uh, combo earlier, but... 
you know, a lot of tension on the board with Sylvanas, and uh, it's going to be difficult for her to come back into this game. Uh, this is basically what the Control Priest wants, right? If they can ever grab control of the board, they're probably not going to relinquish it. Exactly. It's kind of strange, too, because Control Priest has so few minions, but uh, these are the exact minions that Jayshaw needs to get in this game. And you have to remember that Control Priest, at least uh, Jayshaw's version, it doesn't run Ysera. Like, the only threats in the game are... Uh, the biggest threat in his entire deck is basically the Sylvanas. It's really funny that Eloise has to trade into a 1-1 Northshire Cleric, too. Yeah, you can tell she really wants to get this uh, Palage Header back uh, as part of that redemption. But it's uh, going to be hard for her to, for that to happen because Jayshaw doesn't have the Pyromancer anymore. Um, I guess he might just trade in here, but, uh, well, you know... Okay, never mind. Um, anyway, so yeah, th this chain reaction is going to go off. Um, obviously, the uh, Mysterious Challenger wasn't played, but this ends up being the case anyway. Uh, Jay Shaw can guarantee that he takes the two drop if he decides to Cabal Shadow Priest that uh, Noble or the Defender here. Yeah, I figure it might as well. You don't have that many other better options here. Yeah. Redem uh, Repent is going to come out, but everything that Jayshaw could have played from his hand would have been painful to uh, come out anyway. The Unseeable Ghoul hurts his own board, but I don't. I wouldn't be too sad about that. Uh, it kind of limits what Eloise is able to play anyway. Yeah, uh, you figure you... Oh, wow. Well, just True Silver Champion is uh, <laughs> going to do a lot of work. If True Silver Champion weren't there, then Jayshaw could have just traded a lot of his stuff into what Eloise had, but this is probably the worst case scenario. Right. So, Eloise, um, this is, I guess in the end, that ended up being the best case scenario for Eloise, like you say. But, and, uh, yeah, Jayshaw's going to have to start from scratch to get back this board. Um, I guess the remaining secret is Competitive Spirit, and which Jayshaw, I believe, knows. So, yeah, going to just have to be defensive here. He does have the Justicar in hand to be able to heal for a lot. Um, and this kind of anti-aggro uh, scenario, it typically works the same as... Um, the warrior hero power because you're probably not going to be getting that high anyway. So, yeah, going to be working out pretty reasonable in the end if he gets that Justicar. But for now, going to get the biggest board possible. Yeah, I was honestly expecting some kind of Justicar here in order to set up for better heals, especially on the injured Blade Master. But I think what what Eloise is, or rather what Jayshaw is doing right now, is setting up a huge light bomb. Yeah, definitely. That light bomb will, it's just kind of his reset button, obviously. Uh, to, you know, clear the board pretty easily. <sighs> he, I, I don't think he uses it here. Well, I mean, he could. But uh, it would involve giving up his, uh, his injured Blade Master. He could heal out of range to ping off the shield, but um, it wouldn't matter if he used the Light Bomb. But, yeah, maybe, just, maybe he just eats the damage this turn. You never know. Consecrate's decent, I suppose. Consecrate's actually pretty amazing. What you can do is you Consecrate off the Divine Shield and then set up for a Light Bomb the next turn, which right. probably um, will happen if Eloise pl plays into it with the Dr. Boom. Like, without that Consecrate, it actually was looking not that great for Jayshaw because uh, he didn't really have two ways to deal with two huge minions. He would have to top deck his second Light Bomb or, his, uh, or a Shadow Word Death. And always that Ashbringer will cause a lot of trouble. Yeah, definitely. I do like the heal on the injured Blade Master just to be as annoying as possible. Uh, make it harder for her, uh, Eloise to deal with. And now, yeah, it ends up working out. It's almost like uh, she was he was able to heal himself by healing his Blade Master uh, because of the fact that Eloise ended up trading into it. Mysterious Challenger uh, pulls two secrets. Uh, do we know what those are? I forgot which ones we've seen already. Uh, they're probably just... Avenge and Noble Sacrifice, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look. take a look at the deck list. Yeah, most likely they're those two because there's only... Well, there's five types of secrets, but I don't believe there were two copies of those played yet. Right. Um, so Jayshaw has a few options here. Um, obviously, Jayshaw is kind of in the driver's seat despite, you know, Eloise having a much larger board. Uh, it's just kind of how Jayshaw plans on you know, going about these next few turns. This Akanai is a pretty big pickup because of the Lila Naru to be able to start clearing off some minions. 
Um, but uh, gonna be difficult if he gets his. That opponent. was. I was just gonna say that was a really dangerous play because exactly this could happen. Right. Huh. So now Jace has kind of put himself in a bit of trouble here by doing that. I mean, he can light bomb next turn, but he will have taken a lot of damage in the meantime. Right. It's going to be a critical plunger that he just did. The thing is, like, even if things went well and the Avenge didn't land on Tyrion, then he would still be taking a ton of damage to face. He would still be taking the Mysterious Challenger plus the Haunted Creeper plus Ashbringer plus the Avenge damage. Yeah, so, I mean, it could have been maybe a light bomb turn that turn, or maybe just set up Justicar for future turn, especially because the Akanai wasn't too effective this turn, honestly. Right, and now Lothab will pretty much lock wow. out the game, unfortunately. That is, I didn't notice that she had drawn Lothab, but uh, that's probably game. I mean, what can Jayshaw really do here? I mean, he can double damage heal his, or kill his, start killing his opponent, but... Um, that doesn't actually do anything, especially with the uh, Ashbringer coming out. So Jay Shaw, I was just saying he was in a good position last turn, but that assumed that he made good plays. Uh, did it? Unfortunately, had a pretty big blunder, like you say, and that's going to be it. All of a sudden, he's just out. Going to be 2-0 for Eloise. Yeah, this could just be a case of Jay Shaw never really playing Control Priest that much, and this format dictating that he has to play Priest in one of his in one of his games. Um, if he's not familiar that much with Priest, I think I would recommend him to play the Dragon Priest instead, which is overall, I think, an easier deck, much easier than Control Priest. But he just chooses to go with the Control Priest, and he kind of he's kind of punished for it. Fortunately for him, though, he's going into three different decks that counter Eloise's last deck, Phase Hunter. Yeah, definitely. All these decks are great against Phase Hunter. What do you think is the most vulnerable deck to losing here? Um, let me take a look. So, I think it probably, it's definitely not Control Warrior. I feel like Control Warrior probably has a good spot, um, especially because Jay Shaw is running Revenge. He's running Iron Beak Out, two great cards against, uh, against Face Hunter. Freeze Mage, uh, it's possible that Freeze Mage loses to Face Hunter, though. It's also possible that this... Priest loses to it, even with the double Death Lords, if you don't draw the double Death Lords, if you don't draw all the anti-aggro cards. Um, overall, though, I would say that they both have, they, all three decks have about around a 30% chance to lose with, a 30% chance to lose, basically. So Eloise still has some hope. Yeah, I would have to say that the Freeze Mage has the uh, biggest chance of dying to the Face Hunter. Um, something that Firebat actually mentioned in one of his streams, which I found was really, really interesting, is that uh, he was he was commenting on how Freeze Mage got a little bit weaker. This was uh, over a month ago, but um, he was just talking about why you know Freeze Mage wasn't being seen, why he wasn't playing it as much in tournaments, and he mentioned that it's not that the any cards changed the matchup; it's just that the players got better and figured out more, figured out. Uh, better plays to be able to deal with the um, with the uh, the freeze mage as the hunter player. So it's basically getting used to the decks and getting used to uh, how to play the matchup. Right. Of course, it's it's always nice that player skill may, um, makes a big impact. And ooh, we see it's kind of the optimal turn for Eloise. She's she's gonna be able to set up the death spite along with the Acolyte and Armorsmith. But you know what? That key Pilot Shredder is going to do some work, at least. Pilot Shredder is kind of almost like a, a tech card, especially against Warrior. I think uh, because of the addition of Pilot Shredder, the matchup suddenly goes up to like 10%, basically, mm -hmm. because it's just overall so hard to deal with. Uh, we saw a lot, of, uh, a lot of hybrid hunters back in the day, especially a deck called Chalky Hunter, which utilized, it's, it's basically a face hunter build with freezing traps and pilot shredders and lothas, but not Savannah high mains. And that did really well like, just against the field, even warrior, even patron warrior, because it just had those solid minions that warrior had a hard time dealing with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, obviously, I mean, in, even in this case, the pilot shredder doing a really good job dealing damage uh, to Jace, dealing extra damage with that front body, and uh, now possibly drawing like, Eloise more cards. Very kind of difficult turn for here. Um, I imagine she wants to silence that armor smith. Uh, 
I mean, obviously giving your opponent cards isn't the greatest, but uh, I feel like she wants to get rid of that uh, that armor gain as much as possible. But at the same time, you know, Night Dragon Unleashed would be pretty reasonable as well. So it looks like she is going to go with the Animal Companion. Doesn't want to get rid of that Night Dragon Unleashed quite yet, and is going to just uh, smork it up with that Blood Mage down us. Yeah, not really too much of a reason to trade here, because you, you figure the Acolyte will trade anyway. And it's probably not very likely that this this uh, Leoc dies because we've already seen all the weapons being played. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Uh, for from Jason's perspective, um, he can pretty safely play this Sludge Belcher, uh, knowing that he just saw the Iron Peak Owl. Um, obviously, you kind of want to play on curve, but at the same time, you want to get something in the way. Uh, if you wanted to play on curve, I imagine it would be the uh, Shield Maiden, and then maybe he can Sludge Belcher. Ooh, he's gonna go face with this. He's really worried about Snake Trap, it seems. Huh. And even the spell damage kills off the, the Armorsmith as well. Oh my, that could be a key blunder right now. Right, I, I'm not sure if you knew about that interaction, but basically because of that play, he's kind of forced himself into playing Sludge Belcher. And the kill command off the top for Eloise is absolutely huge. She can, you know, well, it's actually 6 damage, funnily enough. Uh, for the kill command, so a little bit of overkill, but she can do that. She can throw in the Thanos, get in five damage to face on board, and from there, uh, I guess war again and hero power. But regardless, she's getting a lot of damage, in, and Jay Shaw all of a sudden in a lot of trouble in a, in a favorable matchup. Yeah, just again, it seems to it seems to be that he's like been blundering in two games in a row, um, even though he's really ahead in this match. Uh, rather ahead in his group with a 2-0 record. Things just seem to not be going well for him at all. Yeah, definitely. And is there even a way for him to survive this turn? I don't believe so. Well, you can uh, Shield Maiden and Shield Slam the Leoc. Right. So that brings it down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage on board. Yeah. Um, and I believe that, that allows him to survive as long as no additional damage is drawn. I'm going to go with the Execute and dead feels that he's okay. always going to have at least two armor or at least a yeah. two armor shield sign which is uh what he needs and execute almost never can get procked how much damage is this um the glaive zuka is three so that's eight and then so uh, i think it's 11 or oh, sorry that, uh, exactly 10 damage lethal? that's I think exactly that's lethal, exactly yeah. lethal. uh well the unleash being one more so yeah, so Eloise is going to get 3-0 J-Shaw, it seems like. And that brings her in a very good position. And J-Shaw went from absolutely in a fantastic position at 2-0 to now. He's 2-1, but he has a pretty bad score at 500, I believe. So if there is a 3-way th 2-1 tie, then I don't think he's in a very good position to move on. Yeah, it's really strange. I think... Uh... At least in two of those games, Jay Shaw just did not play that well. And based on that, I'm not sure if he even deserves to go into the playoff matches. <laughs> Strong words from Monk. Yeah. Wow. Shots fired. Shots fired. So, I mean, before we go to the break, uh, before our last match, we can do a little bit of math so we know what the player situations are. I don't believe anyone is safe right now. So, Eloise went 3-2 and two in her first match. Uh, so, yeah, let me just write that down. 3-2. and two. And then she went 1-3 and three in her second match, losing that to Surrender. Then we, she won this one 3-0. and oh. So she is 7-5 and five with a plus 2 record. Uh, we can go over J-Shaw. J-Shaw was 3-2 uh, and two versus Surrender. And then he was 3-1 and one versus Full Oliver. And now 0-3. Oh so he is 6-6 six and six with a 500 record. So currently, obviously, uh, Eloise will be ahead in that matchup. And then finally, we have uh, Surrender... At uh, he has two yeah. and three, and what was the other one? He was three and one versus Eloise, and uh, Fallover is zero and two, uh, having lost uh, what was it? Two, three, and one, three. So, yeah, very interesting. Surrender currently with a positive record. So if Surrender wins, I believe he will move on over Jay Shaw. And if he basically, if Surrender wins, he moves on. If he loses, then uh, then Jaysha moves on. But what that does mean is that Eloise automatically moves on because mm -hmm. she she can't do worse than Jaysha, and she uh, she pretty much has the best record right now. 
Yep, so all you Eloise fans, you can uh, rest easy. She is on to the final eight, we can confirm with our math skills. In any case, we are right in the middle of the break for the Chinese broadcast, so we'll let you watch these uh, videos, and when we come back, we'll have our final match, Fall of Her versus Surrender.